So hello everyone. Um, today I'm going to present you some recent work in our laboratory about uh, sweetness in dry wines. So as Axel presented to you, uh, astibin is a sweet molecule isolated uh, from the grape by blandin, and its structure is represented here. The aglycone part uh, of astilbin has two stereogenic centers, as well as astilbin has other stereoisomers, and there are four at all. The first one is neoisoastilbin, and the second one is isoastilbin, and the last one, neoastilbin. And as astilbin is known as a sweet molecule, we wondered if the other isomers also tasted. So after synthesis and purification, we test them individually. The sensory analysis by adding each compound at five milligram per liter in a wine revealed that all isomers increase the taste of uh, sweetness compared to the non-spiked wine. They also decrease the soreness. And the intensity of sweetness is different with each isomer. So the stereochemistry influences the taste properties of these compounds. Then a quantification method has been developed in LCHRMS. And thus, this isomer were quantified in 63 commercial red wines, come from different regions and from different grape variety. And here you can see the box plot corresponding to the concentration of the compound in wines. So you can see that astibin is the predominant isomers and its mean concentration is nine milligram per liter, while the concentration of the other isomers are less abundant, but also uh, of the order of, the, of milligram per liter. And in this table, I have shown you the details of the astibin concentration according to the region and therefore the grape variety. So wine from Beaujolais and Burgundy contain greater amounts of astibin than Bordeaux wines. The concentration of astibin varies between eight to 40 milligram per liter, while the concentration uh, of astibin in Bordeaux wines is below five milligram per liter. This, this suggests that there would be a varietal effect, but experiments are necessary to validate this hypothesis. Moreover, we analyze them in different wine in vintage from the same estate in Burgundy. So here you can see the relationship between the concentration of stereoisomers and aging since 1918. So we can see that astilbin is more important in young wines and its concentration tend to decrease with aging. While the amount of the other isomers, especially neoastilbin, are higher in old wines with a concentration of five milligram per liter in vintage 1918. It suggests here that neoastilbin was formed over time, maybe through an isomerization of astilbin, but future study will aim to clarify this hypothesis. Then uh, these molecules alone do not explain the sweet sensation perceived in wine. As Axel said previously, there is an increase in perceived sweetness during post-fermentation maceration, during which there are the yeast autolysis and also the extraction of solid constituents from grapes. Astilbin and APDPHG were quantified during these different steps, and these results revealed that their concentration did not change during post-fermentation maceration. This is why we are looking for new markers of sweetness. And to study this compound appearing during post-fermentation maceration, the first step is sampling. So during winemaking process, we took sample just after the alcoholic fermentation, uh, which gives us the modality AF, and we took sample after post-fermentation maceration, which constitutes the modality PFM. These samples were all taken in real condition. In fact, we worked with several Bordeaux wineries from six different designations. 
And for the 2019 vintage, we worked with five estates different. And for that of 2020, we worked with eight estates. And in total, we analyzed uh, 440 samples, and the samples were analyzed in LC HRMS. And for this analysis, we use a new approach called untargeted metabolomic analysis. For this, we use liquid chromatography coupled with, with high resolution mass spectrometry. And the global ID is to get a chemical fingerprint of our samples. After this analysis, uh, there is a data processing step using specific software. Uh, this allows us to obtain a list of observed ions, which correspond to uh, some molecules. Um, and then we carry out some statistical analysis to highlight this, the ions whose abundance varies between, uh, du sorry, during baiting. So we obtain uh, between three and 50% of these ions, which varies um, during baiting. And to better understand this variation, we have classified them into two groups, those which increase and those which decrease during post-fermentation maceration. And the ion for which we see an increase during the post-fermentation maceration are interesting ions that could be sweet. This is why we calculate an increase in each ion. And then we can classify this ion according to two criteria. Uh, the first one is um, the high, an high increase during post-fermentation maceration. And the second one is a significant abundance in wine. And with this method, we choose one compound in particular, which is called targeted compound or TC. Thus, we know that this targeted compound increased during post-fermentation maceration. But now we want to know what are its sensory properties. So for this, a purification protocol was developed using the same techniques as for fractionation by eustatometry. We use solid phase extraction, liquid-liquid extraction, centrifugal partition chromatography, and finally, preparative liquid chromatography to purify two milligrams of our molecules. And this allowed us to taste this compound at five milligram per liters in a hydroalcoholic solution. And we found it sweet with a rating of four to five. So this compound may participate uh, in the increase of perceived sweetness during post-fermentation maceration. And further study will have to be carried out to elucidate the structure of this compound and to quantify it in wines in order to conclude on its sensory impact. Then the aim is to study the winemaking process, uh, for example, the temperature or the maceration time to find out if they have an effect on the abundance of this compound in wine. To conclude, the taste guided fractionation is a widely used uh, method in uh, our laboratory to isolate sweet compounds like astibin or APDPAG. And a new approach, the non-targeted metabolomic analysis, allows us to focus on one step of winemaking process to find new markers of sweetness in dry wines. And these two approaches therefore become complementary for the search for taste-active molecules in wine. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>